Washing your motorcycle sounds like a pretty easy and obvious task, but if you want to protect your paint from scratches and swirl marks, there are a few simple techniques that can really make a big difference. Well, let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Motorcycle Detailing Series, where today we're going to talk about how to wash and dry your motorcycle using some widely accepted techniques that will protect your paint from scratches and swirl marks. Now, you may not realize it, but much of the damage to your painted surfaces actually comes from washing and drying. I have a ton of information to share with you in this video, and I can't wait to get started. But before I go any further, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, or videos like this, or perhaps you're just passionate about motorcycles in general, please take a second to click that subscribe button and the notification bell. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and YouTube is just going to simply let you know when I come out with new videos. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year, so we invite you to join this growing family. Today we're going to use the two-bucket method to wash my 2018 Honda Goldwing. But this same method can be used when washing any motorcycle, or any vehicle for that matter. The two-bucket method is common practice among professional automotive detailers. And while on that topic, let me say right up front that I am not a professional detailer. However, I've watched more than my share of auto detailing videos on YouTube, and I've been applying these methods and techniques for quite some time on my own cars and motorcycles. In this video, I'll be using a variety of products, all of which have been purchased. None of the products or brands mentioned were provided free of charge, nor have they paid me to make this video and none of them are sponsors on my channel. However, this video is only possible because of the support of viewers like you who have purchased my Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. I actually have two video series available, and you can get all of that information on my website. I'll put links in the description down below, and I'll also put links in the description to any of the products that I use or mention in this video, many of which can be purchased through my Amazon page. Before we get started, let me explain why we use a two-bucket method. Now, I'm going to be using two five-gallon paint buckets for this wash, and in one bucket I'll have my car wash detergent mix, and in the other I'll have clean water. I'll be using the Ceramic Wash and Wax from Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions. However, any good quality car wash will suffice. I would not recommend using dishwashing liquid as it could be kind of harsh and it could remove any protectant that you might have applied to the paint already. Griot's Garage makes an excellent car wash and there's others from the Chemical Guys, Meguiar's and most of the popular brands. I'll be using two gallons of water for my soapy wash bucket. Turtle Wax instructions say to use three ounces of car wash per gallon, so I've measured out six ounces for this wash. Now, if I was doing a larger vehicle like my car, I'd probably use three or four gallons of soapy water, but for a motorcycle, two gallons should suffice. In my rinse bucket, I'll be using four gallons of clean water. The rinse water will be used to rinse out my wash mitt and remove any contaminants that it might pick up during the wash cycle. And this chenille wash mitt comes from the Chemical Guys. Again, I'll put links in the description of this video. In the bottom of each bucket, I'll be placing a grit guard. And this is a very important part of the two bucket method because as you dunk the wash mitt into the soap solution or the rinse water, any dirt or dust or grime or other contaminants will tend to fall to the bottom of the bucket. 
the grit guard will keep those contaminants in the bottom of the bucket away from the wash mitt so that they won't go right back onto the mitt and then onto your paint. When you drag a dirty rag or wash mitt across a painted surface or a clear plastic windshield, it's the dirt, dust, and other contaminants that can scratch the surface or leave swirl marks. The grit guard greatly reduces that likelihood. Now here I have two different grit guards that I'm using. The first one I've had for several years. It's pretty common. You'll find it in a lot of places and it works fine. But just this week, I found an even better one that I like called the Cyclone Dirt Trap from the Chemical Guys. And I'm going to be using that in my soap bucket today. Now, my buckets are just standard five-gallon paint buckets that I got from Lowe's. They're really nothing special. After we wash and rinse the motorcycle, I'll be testing out this new Sidekick Air Dryer from Metrovac. I actually received this as a gift for Christmas, and I've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to test it out. And I realize that not everyone has one of these blow dryers. So in that case, a good, highly absorbent microfiber towel is recommended. And my favorite one is the Dry Me A River Waffle Weave Microfiber from the Rag Company. These towels have soft suede edges to prevent scratching. And I'll also be using one of these to do some touch-up drying at the end of the video after I use the blow dryer. So that's the plan for this wash. I'm going to pull the bike out to my driveway into a shaded area and get washing. And by the way, it's always a good idea to wash your motorcycle or your car in a shaded area if possible, or at least avoid washing in direct sunlight. So let's get to the driveway. Okay, so I'm going to pour my soap into my bucket here. Got my six ounces. Go ahead and rinse that out a little bit. And let's uh, agitate this up a little bit just to get a little bit of suds going in. Our wash mitt, which also comes from Chemical Guys, which is available on Amazon, and we're going to get it really good and soap. So here you can see I've got my wash bucket on the left, I've got my rinse bucket on the right, I've got my grit guard down in the bottom. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I start washing the bike is I want to make sure that all my saddlebags and uh, trunk are closed, all my glove box. You may notice the bike's already wet. Uh, that's because I already did this section and I forgot to hit the record button on the recorder. So I'm going to go over it again just so you know, because I've already done this. Make sure everything's sealed up. I also, since we have an adjustable windshield on the 2018 Plus Goldwing, I went ahead and raised the windshield to its highest position. I want it to be up as high as it is. It makes it easier to wash. We talked about that in my windshield washing video. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and just give the bike a good rinse with uh, clear water to get the surface dust off first. Now, you've already seen me do a video using a pressure washer. If you have access to a pressure washer or a foam cannon, you're certainly free to use that. Uh, the only problem is you have to be careful when you use a pressure washer on a motorcycle because if you get any high pressure water into these electrical uh, switches, it can really cause some problems. So you have to use a lot of caution. Watch my pressure washer video and I talked about that in a little more detail. So I'm going to go around and I just wanted to rinse off the bike and get it wet first. On a normal detail wash or any wash, I would have already done my wheels and tires. We could assume that's already done. That would be the first thing I would do before I would wash the bike because I don't want to get any contamination from the wheels and tires onto the motorcycle paint. So I'd rather do that separate and then start washing the bike. Okay, now I'm gonna take my mitt. I'm gonna get the soap, get it full of soapy water. And then I'm gonna just let that water, that soapy water mixture, I'm gonna kind of squeeze it out over the bike. I want to get it kind of soaked up a little bit 
and uh, then we can start rubbing it. I'm not rubbing really hard. Um, and you always want to start at the top of the bike and work your way to the lower part of the bike. The lower part of the bike is the dirtiest part. That's where there's going to be the most contamination. So you don't want to transfer those contaminants from the lower part of the bike up to the painted surfaces on top. So always start at the top, work your way down. Now I'm going to rinse out my mitt in the rinse bucket, the clear water. Give it a good squeeze. And when I wring this out, I'm going to wring it out over here on the ground. I'm not going to wring it out in the bucket. That way, if there are any contaminants in this wash mitt, I'm not transferring them back into the uh, soapy water. Now we go back to the soap water mixture and Let's get some more soap and continue to wash the motorcycle. Now it's also important to note that all of these are clean. They were freshly washed. I never use a dirty microfiber mitt or towel when I'm working on the bike. It's okay to wash your windshield and your dash. You want to make sure that you've rinsed it really, really good with clean water before you apply any uh, the wash mitt or anything like that. Now if you have a trunk or tour pack on your bike, don't forget it gets pretty dirty underneath. So make sure you get the underside of that of that tour pack or that trunk. Again, I'm trying to get the painted surfaces uh, before I go down into the uh, engine and the, you know, the parts that are really, really dirty. I'd rather get the painted stuff done first. That's why we do the wheels and tires first, because they're, of all the parts on the bike, they tend to be the most contaminated and the dirtiest. This is also a very dirty part of the motorcycle back here on this rear fender area. And of course our mufflers and exhaust kick up a lot of stuff here. Rinsing again. And ringing out on the ground. Getting some more soap. These wash mitts are really superb. They're very good tools. Now I'm ready to do kind of the bottom underside part of the bike that's a little dirtier. I've done all the painted parts. And even with a garden hose, this still has some pretty good pressure, so I'm going to be careful not to get right into these switches. I want to do it from a distance because you don't want to force any water into these hand controls or the center panel switch or anything like that. You don't want to cause yourself any problems with that. So just stand farther away. In fact, I don't even really need... Let's see. Yeah, that's better. That's better for rinsing. I've got a multi-cone tip here that I can adjust. And really, this is all you need for rinsing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start up the bike because I'm gonna be pulling into the garage to dry it off. So, Now, like I said earlier, I've never actually used this little blaster sidekick. I've always heard great things about them. Uh, let's turn it on and give it a try and see how it dries off this bike. It's hard to see on a white motorcycle, but there are water beads all over, obviously. 
Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but the water is literally flying off of this motorcycle. This is a game changer. This is so much easier than having to go around and dry the bike manually. The other advantage I can see to using this sidekick is you don't have to worry about uh, getting any contamination on your drawing towel and accidentally scratching the paint with that. You're just blowing the water off. So it's a, a much safer way to dry the motorcycle in my opinion. I'm sure that's why they're so popular. I know my brother uses these on his car, on his Corvette. Yeah, I'm going to be using this on the car and the motorcycle. This is super cool. I love it. It's uh, much, much easier, uh, even though I'll, I will use the microfiber for some drying duties. I know a lot of people use a leaf blower to do similar, but I'm, I guarantee you there's no way a leaf blower is going to put out the kind of pressure and air pressure that this thing does with this little nozzle on it. I mean, it's unbelievable. It comes with a couple other tips too, I think. Ninety-five percent dry, I would say. I'm going to come back now and do some, just a little bit of touch-up drying on some places I miss using this uh, Rag Company microfiber. I uh, won't have any trouble getting it to, to dry off the whole bike because the bike's almost completely dry now. But I am just going to go through and there's a few little spots on the inside of the windshield that kind of kept splashing around with that air dryer. Not a problem. And this uh, little waffle rag is soft enough to use on your plastic windshield. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the two bucket method we use to wash the motorcycle. Uh, the next step in the detailing process is going to be uh, to use a clay bar. I already have a video on how to use the clay bar with the Griot's Speed Shine to uh, get the uh, contaminants out. I'm also going to do one other step in between just to show how it's done. I'm going to go over the bike tomorrow with an iron remover and we'll take it back out into the driveway. I'll talk about that process and why it's necessary. And if you're going to use a clay bar, it will probably re uh, release and remove any iron deposits anyway. But I am going to do it just to show how to do it as part of the series. Then we'll move on to some polishing steps. And ultimately, what we're going to do with this bike is we're going to be applying a ceramic coating. Now, to get a ceramic coating done professionally on a motorcycle can cost you $1,000 to $2,500, depending on the place you go to, the detail shop. I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself, save that money, and put it in the bank. If you liked this video, please don't forget to click that like button, that little thumbs up. That makes a huge difference on how our YouTube videos are ranked. I very much appreciate it. Please put your comments down below on anything you have any questions on, or if you have any tips or techniques that you use when washing your motorcycle. Until our next Cruise Man's Motorcycle Detailing video, I'll just leave you with this, ride safe.